It is time once again, and it's been a while for our <laughs> county conversation segment. We take a closer look at issues all across the valley. And this morning, we're happy to have Clark County Commission Chair Marilyn Kirkpatrick with us in studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good to see you. It's been a while. Let's start with a topic that's been a, a hot topic of discussion over the last few months. It's the issue of homelessness in the valley. Uh, there's the new ban that I'm sure you're familiar with in the city of Las Vegas that is now in effect but one imagines there's an effect in the broader Clark County as well. So what effects have you been preparing for at Clark County and what discussions maybe have there been between uh, Clark County and the city? So really, um, we started having this conversation a little over a year ago. Um, we dedicated some of our resources to specifically ensuring that we could give the full wraparound um, service to the homeless. So at the end of the day, if we don't have anywhere to put them and if we can't get them back on track, we're really not solving the problem, we're just delaying the problem. So with AB 73 is the working group uh, that the legislature mandated all the cities work together. Um, they're now talking about how do they fund it, but in Clark County, we have over 1,100 beds already on track, so um, we're working hard. Was there any level of frustration that the city has taken these a couple of measures actually to deal with the issue of homelessness in the in the in the city core um, was it a, a pretty uniform uh, discussion between both governments well what I'll tell you is um, sometimes we agree to disagree in our world but at the end of the day um, social service is a Clark County responsibility and so we take that very serious so we have been out um, working to get housing um, we worked with the mayor and now they just put 800 units out there that they're working on so between the two that's almost 2,000 units just in one short year so we're excited to be working together now <laughs> yeah all making right. progress all right so the county has devoted a certain amount of marijuana tax revenue now toward the homeless projects uh, where exactly does that program stand? So the 12 million dollars so we'll, we get a quarterly update and what we've been able to do is focus on our families first um, because what we want to ensure is that the kids have a safe place to sleep at night and they can get to school because that's very important and getting the parents on track so we have purchased those homes uh, uh, the beds that we need 1100 and then we are um, constantly working with our social service to get them all of the needs that they have. Do you think they can keep up? Well, some of the, you talk to some of the advocates in the Valley and they're, they feel uh, they, they're kind of under the, the, the pressure here. As they should be, right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're donating dollars. This is a community-wide problem. So today they might be on one street, but if we don't do anything, the, they'll be on the next street. So we have to stay on top of it. Uh, this week, Commissioner uh, Tick Sagerbloom introduced an ordinance at Clark County Commission uh, trying to bring the laws uh, up to code a little bit regarding the uh, homeless uh, into line with the recent ruling from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. It's a little uh, technical here, but can you try and explain what this ordinance is? So really what this does is just take it all the way out of our code so that we're more in compliance with the Ninth Circuit ruling. So. Um, this way until the court rules again on the next lawsuit um, there's no it's not uh, you're not a criminal by being homeless so we're just taking the words vagrant out of our code okay okay um, some really exciting news so the draft coming here in April really close uh, how much warning did he, did the county get because for us we were really excited but it was coming up pretty quick also um, you, you know, just from an outsider's perspective, it looks like it's a huge benefit to have that here. So what are the benefits as well to the it, county? It really is a huge benefit. And like any other big project, we plan a long time in advance so that we can work through all of the challenges that we may face in any time that you impact um, the strip. We have to ensure that there's public safety. Our, constituents can get to work every day so it, it was a while um, that we worked with them to narrow down on what they wanted to do but we're very excited with 600,000 people at the minimum is what they would like to see um, come to our state will be great for the entire state. You know, when they proposed their plans, and we saw the pictures at the commission meeting, it, you know, there's boats at the uh, found Bellagio yeah. fountains that are going to close off behind the link. How different does that look to what the NFL first told you guys at the very beginning when they said the draft is coming and here's how it's going to be? It's much different. So <laughs> at the end of the day, we always have to remind them that we have 
you know, employees that have to get to work and that we have to, you know, corner off areas for a shorter time, then would you can't just shut down the strip. I mean, that's just not feasible. So, <laughs> but they're excited um, to have folks come out on a boat. Um, the experience itself is free to the community. So it's an opportunity for people to get out and see the NFL draft. <laughs> so cool. And any idea on the economic benefit? Is there a number that we can even come up with to figure out what that would be? So if I remember correctly, Nashville, it was over $100 million in that three-day span. So wow. um, we we always go big or go home, so we want to be better. <laughs> and so we anticipate that it'll be much higher. Wow. You and I had talked uh, last year and earlier this year, well, not last year I guess it would be, about uh, efforts to try and improve uh, transportation and resources on the east side of the valley, the Sunrise Manor area, just sort of east of uh, the 95 515. Where do things stand with that in terms of trying to upgrade some of the arterials, the park uh, aspects in that part of town? So the east side is doing well. They have a couple new parks coming on. We just did Hollywood, um, which has fabulous bike lanes for all those folks that can ride their bike now from Lake Las Vegas all the way to Mount Charleston. Oh, There's wow. a real trail, uh, fiber in the roads, so they actually have uh, 5G capabilities on the east side. And um, so we have parks coming with the roadways. We're in uh, discussions now on what the next arterial will be on that side. Uh, working with the state Sahara as a possible um, ramp to uh, have that access. So they're, they're gonna see a lot of good stuff in the next few years. All right. How exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, it is so nice to have you. I know John was saying it's been a while since we've had you, but. I'm happy to have you too now, and it's nice to meet you. So thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank thanks you for having us.